with their schedule. Yeah, LP will have Sycamore at home next week and at Caneland in week nine. Right. But uh, Ottawa has uh, at Morris, which right. obviously is a juggernaut next week, but then has a week nine senior night home game against Woodstock. Yeah, and that's a winnable game, I think. For sure. And LP beat Woodstock last week 24 to nothing. As uh, Dan alluded to, both teams are 4-2 and two overall. LP's 2-1 and one in the Interstate 8. Ottawa is 1-2. Uh, and two. You mentioned, Dan, the last time Ottawa – was in playoff position, I believe, was uh, when we were calling Ottawa yeah, Pirate football 2012, games. 2012, the Michael Horner Seal year, as oh, everybody yeah. calls it. And, uh, uh, quarterfinal team. Yeah, quarterfinal team got beat by Crete Moni, uh, get beat uh, Normal Community, and then beat Rock Island. And uh, and Ottawa hasn't uh, – LP's won seven straight here uh, going back to 2014. Last time Ottawa beat LP was – 50 to 20 back in 2014. <laughs> so I don't think there's going to be that many points tonight. But I, I was going to say, uh, Dan, uh, yeah. looking at the numbers, now both of these teams have scored some yeah, points. Yeah, well, we're averaging 31 points right. a game, but I don't think it's going to be 50 to 20. Yeah, you look at it, LP scored 138 on the air, given up 113. Ottawa has scored 185 right. and given up 133. LP coming off their uh, first shutout of the season. They blanked Woodstock high last week, 24 to nothing. Mm -hmm. And Ottawa went on the road and uh, beat Woodstock North 33 to 12. And Dan, uh, you know what, as LP Cavalier fans are tuning in, uh, what all can you tell us about this Ottawa team? I know there's a couple players that uh, are three-year starters for Ottawa that we're going to hear their names quite a bit tonight. Well, defensively, yeah, we have three or four defensive. uh, Connor Price and Levi Sheehan and Quatrano and uh, – uh, who's the other one? Uh, Come see your friends at First State Bank. There's a certain satisfaction you get when you know you have a friend to turn to. You have a place to go. Year after year, day after day. When you need a helping hand, we're along the way. Come see your friends at First State member FDIC. Welcome to KC Marketing, your digital marketing agency. KC Marketing specializes in providing affordable online solutions for your business. From graphic design and social media marketing to custom website development. Put the power of KC Marketing to work for you. Search KC Marketing Agency now to get started. 752 yards in six games. All right, we're going to see that. That's going to be probably one of the big differences you'll hear and watch tonight. LP uh, has only passed the ball total, I think, two or three times the last two games combined. Yeah. And Ottawa will uh, spread it out and throw the ball quite right. a bit more. Yeah, they've got uh, about four four kids who catch the ball. Mortensen's 44 for 73 on the year. And uh, Sheehan, Paxton Miller, Ryder Miller, and Price uh, all can catch the ball. Looking forward to it. Ottawa and LP renewing one of the oldest rivalries across the state. You're listening to the WeTech Wealth Management pregame show. If it's time to pregame or regame your retirement, the financial professionals at WeTech can help you design a winning plan. Call WeTech Wealth Management today. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll have uh, tonight's weather of the game. We'll also talk with Dan and uh, see what he thinks are the keys to the game for each side to win this football game. We'll have the coin toss, and we're moments away from kickoff. LP and Ottawa on 103.9 WLPO.
Tonight's Weather of the Game brought to you by Tonic Country Services. Whether it's hot, cold, dark, or light, Tonic Country Services is doing whatever it takes 24-7. Go to toniccountryservices.com to find out more. It is an even 50 degrees right now at Ottawa High School as we near a kickoff. Mostly clear skies, and, uh, yeah, we're looking at, a, what, a freeze warning overnight yeah. tonight Yep. as uh, we may get 33 or 32 by tomorrow morning. So uh, definitely football weather for Ottawa and LP. Uh, time now for our uniform description. Uh, this Cavalier and Pirate uniform description brought to you by Family Pride Cleaners. A proud LP alum, Family Pride Cleaners takes pride in their work, just like the Cavaliers. Follow Family Pride Cleaners on Facebook today. Cavaliers in their road white jerseys with uh, the green pants, the red and white trim, and the green helmets with the red lettering. Ottawa in their uh, red home jerseys, the white helmets, white pants with red trim. And uh, time now for the keys to the game, brought to you by James Hardy in Peru. The key to your new career and a $5,000 sign-on bonus is waiting for you at James Hardy. For all the details and to apply, Visit James Hardy online today. And, Dan, with auto, uh, with LP, I'll give you what I think is their key to the okay, game. Okay, yep, I can give you our Obviously, L. they got a, new, a quarterback that's being uh, pressed into action here, Mason Lynch. He's been a running back and a kick returner mainly this year. So LP just became, one would think, even more one-dimensional right. than they were before. So if I'm LP, I got to believe that Ottawa is going to stack the box. Right. And the Cavaliers are going to have to at least try to keep them honest a little bit passing. What are your thoughts on the Pirates' keys tonight? I think penalties is a big thing. Now, if you look at their penalties, last week, 12 penalties for 105 yards and an easy win over Woodstock North. Uh, they're averaging eight penalties for 75 yards a game. So there you go, penalties for Ottawa and LP trying to mix up their offense a bit. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll have tonight's coach's interview, and it's brought to you by LaSalle Body and Fender. When your car gets banged up, call LaSalle Body and Fender. Be back after this.
Thank you once again to LP head coach Jose Medina as part of our coach's interview brought to you by LaSalle Body and Fender. And the opening kickoff is by the Audible Pirates and it goes out of bounds. The opening kickoff for tonight's game brought to you by Eureka Savings Bank. Since 1885, Eureka Savings Bank has been proud to be a part of this community, helping people just like you. Eureka Savings Bank member FDIC, Cam Loomis, uh, kicks it out of bounds. That's happened three or four times this year, by the way. So the Cavaliers will start their first drive at the 35-yard line. Again, under center is Mason Lynch. No Brendan Boudreau this week. He is out with a concussion, and they go Peyton Ellermeyer up the middle. And he is tackled immediately by a couple of red jerseys from Ottawa. And they're going to give Ellemeyer one yard on that play. Sprouse and Medro in the tackle. Second down to nine coming up for the Cavaliers. Ottawa won the hometown National Bank coin toss. Don't leave your financial future up to a coin toss. Let the folks at hometown National Bank help. And the, the Cavaliers get the ball first on offense. The fresh sophomore game, 22-0. LP got a win over Ottawa. And again, Ottawa really is just going to say, you know what, make, try to make LP pass the ball. Lynch with a keeper, and Mason gets maybe one, falling forward off right tackle. Again, uh, Medro with the tackle. So two tackles early for Medro for Ottawa. And here's what LP doesn't want to see without their quarterback, a third and long right away out of the gate here. So who's the carrier on your first uh on your first play. I'm it was Ellermeyer, number 20. Gotcha. Pey Peyton Ellermeyer, who will be the, the starting fullback. Madrigal will get right. quite a bit of carries as well. So third down and eight again. Mason Lynch, his first start at quarterback in his high school career at varsity. And Mason's going to pass. And he's rolling, and he's going to be sacked. Ryder Miller. Number 13, Ryder Miller for Ottawa brings him down. Looked like uh, Lynch was looking for number 33, Gage Starkey, but uh, did not get the ball out. And LP will go three and out on their first possession. And Malik Madrigal will come out and do the punting and back deep for Ottawa is uh, number 17 for the Pirates, Julian Alexander, a sophomore. Uh, Ryder Miller is our leading tackler as a freshman two years ago, as a sophomore last year, and is our leading tackler this year. Madrigal standing just outside his own 15-yard line. Gets plenty of height. This one's angling out of bounds, and uh, it'll actually land near the Ottawa sideline, on the Ottawa sideline, and we'll see where they mark it. They'll say at the 46 of Ottawa. So great starting field position for the Pirates on their first drive of the night. you got to apologize, fans. I'm an Ottawa stats guy. so oh, that's okay. I, I said R. <laughs> Probably shouldn't say R on the WLPO, but Ottawa's leading uh, – tackler all three years is uh, Ryder Miller would probably be the all-time tackler in the history of the school if, if there was such a thing, but there's no way to know <laughs> that because they didn't keep tackles back in the old days. So. Todd was starting on the 46th to still 0-0 here in the first quarter. So here come the Pirates uh, empty backfield for their quarterback. They will spread it out. Mortensen, the quarterback. Definitely a different uh, look than obviously LP brings to the table offensively. Mortensen will hand it right. off. Nope, and that's Alexander. Nice gain by number 17, Alexander, inside LP territory, down to about the Cavalier 47-yard line. So a big gain of almost six, seven yards on the Pirates' first carry. Yeah, Alexander came into the game uh, with uh, uh, 300 yards exactly in six games. Ottawa looking at a second and three at the Cavalier 48-yard line. We're just underway. No score. The Cavs went three and out on offense. Ryder Miller. Miller breaks a couple tackles. He's got first down and more down to the Cavalier 35-yard line. There were a couple Cavaliers who got in the backfield, but uh, Miller broke away and gets a first down and more. 14. They move the chains. Ottawa with their second first down already at the Cavalier 34-yard line. Counting down to nine minutes to go here in the first quarter. And Ryder Miller came into the game with 346 yards on 60 carries. Mortensen back in uh, the shotgun for Ottawa. And he's going to pitch it out. Alexander. Looking to get the corner. Alexander does get the corner and turns it inside to 30 before he's brought down. And LP saying he fumbled it. Mm. And the Cavaliers have the recovery. They must have stripped it. Look like 23, Imany with uh, the football. Brett Imany for the Cavaliers. 
Alexander had a nice gain, but uh, they stripped it. And that was right in front of the Cavalier sideline, and immediately they were reacting as if there was a turnover. So first turnover of the night, and uh, that is brought to you by Bex Oil. Tonight's turnover is proudly sponsored by Bex, keeping your car turning over with fuel from Bex and Prue or LaSalle. Try a delicious Godfather's Pizza from Bex in LaSalle. Well, Dan, you mentioned penalties, turnovers, mistakes. Mm -hmm. There's a big one early for yes, Ottawa. Yes, it is. Pitch to Romanoli, he tries to get the corner and there's gonna be a hold on Otto, or on LP. Romanoli got it out to about the 34, but a flag thrown by the official standing next to Ottawa coach Chad Gross. And it's gotta be a hold for him to get around the corner is my guess, we'll see. Although, I almost see a face mask indication. It could be. So, let's see. Uh, speaking of turnovers, actually Ottawa has 17, uh, has 417 and only had seven going into the game. So, turnovers hasn't, yeah, yeah it was face mask. Automatic first down for LP. So, I add that on to the run. Roman Oli with his first carry of the night for LP. So, it must just have been a five yarder because it's just to the 38. So, second possession of the night for LP, no score. And the Cavaliers will have first down, but just two yards to go now. First and two at their own 38. Lynch back under center. Peyton yep. Ellermeyer behind him in motion is Billy Minnie and uh, flag flies. We'll see if it's a false start on the Cavaliers. So I, I misspoke, it was an automatic, it was not an automatic yep. first down. So they'll give five of those yards back, yep. the Cavaliers will, on their five yard penalty. Back to the 33, 34. That's about a four yard penalty, but so 8.24 left, 0-0 zero, zero here against uh, two teams that have met 100, this 123rd time dating back to 1898. It's a long time ago. I wasn't here for that. <laughs> no, yeah. yeah, 1898. That's a long time ago. But one of the oldest and most uh, fiercest rivals in the rivalries in the state. Yeah, this is right up there with, as you know, like Dan, Rock I'm, Island, yeah, Moline. I'm from Moline, and oh, I think yeah. they always claim they have one of the oldest, if not the oldest. Rivalries. Lynch is going to keep it. Mason turns the corner. 45 hurdles over a defender, and he's pushed out of bounds. Lynch has the first down. They're going to mark him back at the 46 yard line, so gain of about 11. That is what Mason Lynch does bring to the backfield as a quarterback. Uh, last week he came in and he had a 26 yard touchdown run, so that's the danger if you're Ottawa with a guy like Mason Lynch, his speed at quarterback. Right. Right, he, he, had, he just outran out of there. First and 10, clock stopped as Lynch went out of bounds at the 46. In motion is Romanoli. Romanoli gonna get the pitch, turns it inside. Oh man, a big collision there. And he runs right into uh, number 40. Brandon Aguirre. Yeah, Aguirre, 42. Romanoli is a smaller guy, but uh, as you've seen there, Dan, he will take on oh, all yeah. comers. That was a, quite a collision. And uh, that's a two-yard run for number 13, Romanoli, for LP. Second and eight. We're now about five minutes into this one. Each team has had a possession. LP's on their second. The Pirates uh, were driving, but they fumbled yes. a strip from the LP defense. Cavaliers trying to get in the Ottawa side of the field for the first time tonight. Lynch hands it off. There's Ellermeyer off left tackle. Peyton Ellermeyer keeping his legs churning for a first down, stumbling ahead, and he gets the first down. They'll mark it down at the Pirate 41-yard line, first down LP. So Ellermeyer and Madrigal have been uh, the fullbacks, uh, if you will, uh, the workhorses. And then you got more of the speedy guys like Romanoli and Lynch will run to the outside. First and 10, LP at the Pirate 41 yard line. LP again with a tight formation on offense. And they give it right back to Ellermeyer, goes up the middle, still going down to about the 38. It's Medro and uh, uh, Miller on the tackle. LP looking at a second down and uh, I'd say a long seven, a short eight coming up. Checking out, LP may, or uh, Ottawa makes a substitution. Tristan Finley getting a break. So early on, we're halfway through this first quarter, no score. The Cavaliers on their best drive of the night so far, their second one. 
they went three and out on their first drive. For a second down and eight coming up for LP at the Pirate 39. Lynch going to run the option, and uh, he's going to be Quitrano. brought down for a loss. Yeah, that was Dylan Quatrano. Brought Lynch down behind the uh, chains. It's going to be a loss of a solid four. Yep. And if you're Ottawa, this is where you want LP to be on offense, third and long. Right. Yeah, because they don't pass very often. So let's see what LP, maybe LP's thinking, get a chunk of this here and go for it on fourth down. Right. Mason Lynch will bring in the play from uh, offensive coordinator Nathan Boudreaux. Of course, his son, the quarterback, out with a concussion protocol. Ottawa is allowing 22 points a game um, defensively. Lynch takes his time getting up to center. Third and long for the Cavaliers. Oh, they move. Looks like LP did move. I don't see any flags. Nope. And, well, oh, there was. Yeah, Lynch was hit, but the they did get the false start. So there yeah. was a flag thrown on the far side of the field from us. So it'll be third and 17 for the Cavaliers. Lynch was brought down, but the play uh, was no play. Right. So they'll move LP back to uh, the Ottawa 48 now. Third and a long way to go for LP. The football right on the O, which is normally painted red, but uh, of course it uh, is a blue out tonight as uh, Ottawa student Landon McAlpine having a battle with colon cancer. And uh, nice to see. Uh, I see a lot of blue on the LP yeah. side of the field as well. Yeah, I pulled out a blue jersey that I had more in years. Uh, that's all. That's an awesome jersey. Yeah, that's an old jersey from the <laughs> 70s. Oh, yeah. Third and long for LP coming up here. Lynch is going to give the pitch to Romanoli. Turns it inside. He fumbles Fumble. it. And it's on the field, and Ottawa's got it. And the Pirates pick it up. It looked like number 46. Yeah, Medro. Charles Medro. So each team has put the ball on the turf. Quatrano forced to fumble. Catrano and FF force fumble, and Romanoli put it on the turf. So Ottawa will now have their second possession of the night. Romanoli would have been well short of the first down. And uh, we have a Subway scoreboard update and uh, Battle of the Unbeatens. Princeton up early, 14 0 over St. Bede. They wow. are. Princeton uh, must really be good. They're a machine. Princeton, you know, that's in the old day. I guess the old days, that Princeton was just an average football team. Yeah. Now they're a powerhouse. <laughs> Putting up 70 points. So I got it was confused a little bit here. Yeah. They're running all over the play. They're going to have to call timeout. Call. Yeah. And they haven't used one yet. No, they they're, got it off. They're going to hand it off. Alexander. And he runs into a couple of Cavalier defenders. Probably no gain. Yeah. Rodriguez was there. Imani there. Glenn as well for LP. No gain on the play for Alexander. It'll be second down and 11. Three carries for 11 yards for Alexander on the night. And he did have a fumble. Yeah. Some other uh, games will be watching. Mendota, they have their homecoming tonight. I believe they're playing Kiwani. Yeah. Marquette playing tomorrow. Yeah, Walter, Melrose Park, Walter Luther. And... Throw a tip and oh, almost intercepted by Caleb Burrell. It was intended for Sheehan, but way over, yeah. way over his head. Wasn't even close. Third and ten. Right. Streeter has a state rank Reed Custer. And speaking of Princeton, Dan, Reed Custer is uh, rated ahead. Yeah, I saw of Princeton that. Princeton in 3A. So yeah, Mendota is home to Kiwani yeah. tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Reed Custer just destroyed Wilmington, which was a huge. Wow. That was a, unbelievable. Yeah. I I just couldn't. It was almost as the, like the Richmond Burton Moore score. Yeah. Just like, I, I honestly wasn't all that surprised the outcome, but the margin of victory. The margin of victory yeah, was a 31 to nothing, I think. Yeah. Wow. Third and 10 for Ottawa. Trips to the right of Mortensen, and he's going to the uh, delayed handoff. Alexander. And Alexander down the sideline, 40, 35, 30, pushed out of bounds by Mason Lynch. So how about that? On a third and long, they run the halfback draw. 24 yards. They spread the Cavalier defense out, and Alexander used his speed. He's very fast. Yeah, and he showed it there getting down to the Cavalier 29-yard line. He and Sheehan. Yeah, he and Sheehan are our two fastest kids. They're both, they are both very fast. 
So third and long, and Ottawa converts it on a uh, delayed halfback draw. And the Pirates now at the Cavalier 29-yard line, first and 10. Mortensen going to pitch it out to Alexander. And he turns it 30, 25, and hit out of bounds. Oh, might have either a face mask or a late hit. It was thrown right where the uh, contact was made. Lynch was there, Medina for LP, Burrell in the area. Okay, looks like it got to the 26, so let's see what happens yeah, from there. Yeah, might be. That's going to be a face mask on the Cavs. So we'll see half the distance, a, or what, will yeah, they go 15? Well, it would be a first down. Nope, nope, just, just a, five a fiver yard. again. That's two fives. You don't see that very often. No, I honestly, Dan, in the six games I've been doing LP, every face mask uh, that I can remember yeah. has been 15 yards. So that brings it down to the 21, with 321 left first quarter. Still no score. Alexander was pushed out of bounds, so the clock stops at 321. Ottawa with their second drive deep in LP territory. The first one ended with a fumble. Three receivers for Ottawa, one to the short side, two to the far side. Now Alexander goes in motion. Mortensen throws it out to him. Big oh, hit. Geez. Nothing there. Oh, he fumbled it. Yeah, he did. But Burrell. we recovered. Yeah, Ottawa recovered. That's going to be a big loss. Burrell made the hit, and uh, really, you wonder if maybe the play should have been blown dead before the ball even came out. Yeah. His forward progress was stopped. Paxton Miller recovered it. And I don't know. All the way if, uh, back to the 20. The loss of eight. Alexander comes out and takes his helmet off. Not sure if he's shaken up or what. Yeah, it could be. So uh, he comes out of the game. Lost the bait all the way back are to the gonna, 29. Oh, they're going to call that an incomplete pass, huh? Oh, okay. I would say it's a bit of a break if you're Ottawa. Yeah, so yeah you're right, incomplete pass. Yeah. Although yep. the clock's running, so make up your mind, I guess, on what we're doing here. Yeah, like or they're going to give him the forward progress and say it was a no gain. I, that's what I guess. I guess it's a catch, Dan, okay. and no gain. All right. Because the clock was running. Okay. Ryder Miller got the handoff and uh, got back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, you're right. No gain there. So third and 10 now for Ottawa at the uh, LP 29-yard line. Cam Lewis has tried one field goal. It was about 35 yards this year. Uh, and then the other one was a bad snap, so he didn't get a chance. To, but he's, he's capable of uh, 35 to 40, I think. Third Cam and Loomis. Third and long for Ottawa. Mortensen dropping back to pass. He's rolling right, throwing over the middle. It's dropped. Dropped. And it was intended for Connor Price. Almost looked like Price took yeah. his eye off the ball. Yeah, he did. Because it was there. It was right in the numbers. So now what's Ottawa do? They go for it? Do they yeah. punt? Or do they try a really long field goal? I think they're going to go for it. I think they go for it, oh, yeah. I think they are. Why not, you know? Fourth and 10 at the LP 39-yard line. Connor Price is not happy with himself, I can tell. Yeah, 29-yard line, excuse me, of LP. So they got to go. It's fourth and 10, then 149 left here. It's a, this is a big play for Ottawa, at least. Oh, yeah. Three receivers to the right of Mortensen, one to the left. And Mortensen looking, throwing over the middle, and too high, too deep, and a big hit by Lynch. Oh, boy. Oh, I don't how agree wait, with that How call. long do they need to wait? It might have been helmet to helmet, but it was a good hit if it wasn't, right? So they get a 15-yarder on a, LP yeah. hitting the receiver late. I as, thought it was uh, legit. But. Levi Sheehan. This is a rivalry game, and uh, the problem was the flag wasn't thrown right away. No, it wasn't. And not only just one official, then two decided to throw it. It was actually Paxton Miller because he's coming yeah. off. He's shocked. He's shaking. He's shaking up. So Ottawa's drive will be kept alive after a 15-yard penalty for LP. Well, the Cavaliers at the same time. They've had the Metamora game. The story of that, Dan, was they had 14 penalties, for I think, for 170 yards. Oh, my goodness. Uh, many, many drives were kept alive, 15-yard personal foul penalties. And when you're facing a program like Metamora, you can't do that. Right. And, uh, so it's all the way down to 11. Yeah. So uh, Ottawa is in the, uh, the Illinois Valley Credit Union red zone as the drive is kept alive by the big 15-yard penalty. Now LP with some late substitutions. LP's calling timeout, I believe. Yep. Yeah, there's a minute 44 to go in this first quarter. No score yet. And uh, 
Now it looks like Ottawa's coach is uh, Chad Gross is upset. Not sure what Chad would be. I don't know for sure. I mean, the call went against LP. Yeah. Oh, oh that's so what a turnover and yeah, that doesn't make well, that doesn't make. <laughs> well, I mean, after yes. the play, so they're saying it's after the play, so it's not automatic first down. Yeah, yeah, okay, all right. So LP will get the ball, okay, all right. There's been a couple confusing. Uh, yes, I guess as long as uh, zebras know what's going on down there. First and ten, so LP will take over after the uh, late hit. First and 10 Cavaliers at their own 11. Lynch uh, hands it off up the middle to Ellermeyer, maybe three yards for Peyton for the Cavaliers. Ryder Miller with the tackle. Be second down and eight, maybe seven for LP. Yeah, we'll say seven, gain out to about the 14. Yep. Down minute 20 to go here in the first quarter. A lot of things happening, but no yeah. points yet. Couple that was, turnovers. That was a weird. That was an unusual play there that <laughs> they didn't get a first down. Yeah. And Lynch is going to try to pass, and Mason throws. It's caught. Caught. And no, dropped. he dropped it. He dropped it. Ellermeyer. Good hit there again by uh, by Dylan Cotrano. So it'll be third down and seven as uh, Lynch attempted is uh, another pass play, but. Ellemeyer was under duress, as Dan mentioned, was covered pretty good by Ottawa. It would have been a fairly short gain, even if he'd have made the catch. It would have been short of the first down. But I'm sure if you're LP, you're thinking maybe give Mason Lynch some confidence in just trying to complete a pass. Again, uh, he sprung into action with Brendan Boudreaux out tonight. And uh, LP, on the positive side, even with a change of quarterback, LP's philosophy really doesn't change much. And Lynch is going to throw. Mason throw, showing off an arm. And he looked for Madrigal. Intercepted. What an interception. Matt Hurley. Wow, tumbled over, and Lynch let it fly. And Hurley with the interception for Ottawa. The intended receiver was Malik Madrigal, number 22 for LP. But Lynch just kind of threw it up, a jump ball. His first interception of the year. Wow, what an interception, a highlight reel. As Mason Lynch showed off an arm. Yeah, he did. But it was picked off, so the Pirates will take it at their own 46-yard line. So the third turnover <laughs> in the first quarter. Two on LP, one on Ottawa. And turnovers throughout the night brought to you by Bex Oil. First and 10, Ottawa now. A good starting field position again for the Pirates. Alexander. He handed off Alexander. He's going to be caught from behind by uh, Connor Lorden, number 32 for LP. Maybe a yard. I mean, it looked like his feet were kind of coming out for him when he made a cut with Alexander. So six carries, 38 yards for Alexander. Six yards on average. A little well, over. he had he had that 24 yard. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Second down and nine coming up. Probably uh, one more play here in the first quarter if it is a running play. Second down and nine coming up. Mortensen in the shotgun. Three receivers to the right, and he's going to pitch it out to Alexander. And uh, he's hit right away. Rodriguez was there for LP. Maybe one. Yeah. And also there looked like Mason Lynch again from the secondary for the Cavaliers. Yeah, they'll give, oh. oh yeah, they'll give maybe one as yeah. they uh, flip the field here. So. We've played one quarter in uh, the latest chapter in this rivalry. Three turnovers, no touchdowns yet, no score. Ottawa and LP, we head to the second quarter. You're home for Cavalier football, 103.9 WLPO. When you need commercial and industrial equipment repair, think full circle industrial. FCI specializes in rebuilding speed reducers and gearboxes. They repair and rebuild all types of pumps and heavy equipment too. You break it, Full Circle will fix it. The techs at Full Circle have more than 75 years combined experience. Put that experience to work for you. Search Full Circle Industrial in Oglesby and see everything FCI can do for you today. 
for plumbing, heating, cooling, generators, and appliances. Think Grazier's Plumbing and Heating in McNabb. Whether you run cold or hot, Grazier's will make sure your home is always just the right temperature. And for those cold winter nights, or when the power's out. And Grazier's does boilers too. Gotta call Grazier's 8822111. Pirates have it third and eight at their own 48 yard line. Mortensen, straight drop back, throwing, gets tipped at the line and falls incomplete. Malik Madrigal, number 22 for LP, got his paws up. And uh, when you're six foot three, that's some pretty imposing coming in. And Madrigal knocked it down, and Ottawa's going to have to punt it away. Chad, Cam Lewis has punted 19 times, averaged 27 2 on the season. 27 yards to 27.2 yards a, a kick. And Ottawa, I'm sure, knows that Mason Lynch is dangerous back there. He's returned two kickoffs oh, really? for touchdowns. Now I know they know that then. And he's standing just outside his own 20. LP brings some heat, but he gets it away. And Lynch is going to fair catch it at the 21 or at the 26 yard line of LP. So still no score. 26 yard punt. Check and see uh, Subway scoreboard update. Look for some scores here. Princeton now leading St. B 21 to nothing in the first quarter. And uh, again, Princeton just uh, seemingly in a whole nother level from a lot of other teams. Made it to the quarterfinals last year and lost at Elmhurst IC Prep, who is number one in 3A. So perhaps Princeton will get another shot at them in the playoffs. Lynch hands it off, left tackle, not much there. And we'll see who it was. Looked like maybe Madrigal. Nope, it was Ellermeyer again, number 20 for LP, a yard off left tackle. Sophomore Weston Evercamp with the tackle. He's a he's a frost soft quarterback. He's a, also a, plays a lot on the varsity uh, defense. Second down and nine coming up for LP. Let's see if we get a Hall Newman score. It's a big game for Hall. They're three and three. The end of one Erie Prophetstown, seven nothing over Bureau Valley. First quarter, Kiwani, 7-6 over Mendota. Back under center is Lynch, and Mason's going to run the option, and he's going to spin ahead and brought down right at the 30 by a couple of Pirate defenders. Quatrano was one of them. Gain of two, maybe three. Yeah, they'll mark him at the, just past the, no, right and at Hurley. the 30. So it'll be third and six uh, for LP coming up. So Lynch, six carries, eight yards. Yeah, not a lot uh, for Mason Lynch yet. He hasn't been able to break free too much. I had one decent run down the LP sideline in the first quarter for a first down. There's a pitch play to Malik Madrigal. Madrigal punishes a pirate defender, puts his head down, and gets the first down out to about the 38-yard line. So there's the first carry for Malik Madrigal. He's been kind of a... A, uh, a big find for LP. Now, he's been on the team all year, but he was he started out as a receiver, Dan, the oh, first okay. couple weeks and uh, caught a pass against United Township. But uh, they had an injury. Mason Lynch was actually suspended um, in the Woodstock North game, and they went with Madrigal at running back, and he just turns into a bulldozer. He's six foot three, about 230. And he got nine on that one. Yeah, and he put his head down, and uh, LP gets a first down, first and ten at their own 39-yard line. Ten minutes to go in this first half. Still no score. Lynch is going to pass over the middle. Caught just a real quick pass to Starkey, who's got a first down. Number 33, Gage Starkey. Hurley with the tackle. Right at midfield, Gage Starkey missed the first few games of the season and uh, had a big touchdown catch against Morris, LP's only score in that game. And he's been a nice... Uh, Player to have for LP, giving him a target, a big body as well for the Cavaliers is Gage Starkey, he's six foot three. Yeah, that was another first down, 11 yard gain. Now they're at the 50, 940 left here in the first half, no score. And I mentioned one of the keys to the game for LP was to at least mix in the pass every now and then. And yep. They did, they, they are doing that this drive. 
Lynch going to run the option. Nice tackle by Ottawa. Lynch could not go anywhere. Looked like uh, 79 made the initial. Uh, Cody Sproles and then also uh, uh, Medro. Yeah, he came in. Medro, I think, came in and finished off the tackle. Right. Gain of only one for Lynch. Tough sledding for Mason so far. Nine minutes to go in the first half. Second down and nine coming up for LP. Uh, this game got going about a little after 7 o'clock. Yeah, it's the earliest game I've seen <laughs> in years almost. For both of yeah, we were both saying yeah. uh, LP, we've had a few games that uh, I think the, the preliminary game was just ending at this point. Yep. Oh, for sure. So uh, this game, and it's moving right along with LP helps it with a lot of runs. Right. Audible obviously will throw a little bit more than, or a lot of it more than LP. And LP is going to call a timeout as soon as I mention uh, the clock churning and the <laughs> game running right <laughs> must along. must have heard you. They prompted a timeout. Let's take another check of the uh, Subway scoreboard update. Brought to you by Subway in Spring Valley, Peru, LaSalle, Marseilles, and Oglesby. Enjoy a sandwich made with freshly baked bread and fresh ingredients right in front of your eyes. Subway, eat fresh. Again, early on, uh, oh, St. Beat is on the board now. 21 to seven, Princeton leading uh, St. Beat in that one. A battle of uh, six and O teams. Have an eight man football score here. Blue Ridge 22-14 over Flanagan Cornell. Uh, let's see, Genoa Kingston 10 nothing over Dixon. Hmm. Went through Genoa on the way to Woodstock. That's a long way up there. Yes, it is. <laughs> Over, over two hours yes, up to Woodstock North. Woodstock North, I guess, obviously uh, even further than Woodstock. Yes, it's it is. Further it's north. out in the country north of Woodstock. <laughs> and Harvard's even farther. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. And we're back in action after the Cavalier timeout. Second down and a nine for LP. 8.38 to go in this first half. Still no score between the Cavaliers and Pirates. Lynch going to pitch it to Madrigal. Malik gets it out to about the 47, maybe two on the carry. Luke Bowes with the tackle. And Miller in the area as well for Ottawa. Third down and seven coming up for the Cavaliers at the Ottawa 47. So a struggle for both teams. Now both teams a uh, few times have been their own worst enemy in this first yes, half with turnovers. No score still and uh, we're down eight minutes to go in this first half. This could be a classic LP Ottawa grinder here. Yes, it could be a low scoring game. Let's see what well, 0-0 in 1965. <laughs> and both teams ended up 8-0-1 that oh, year. Oh, yeah? Yep. Okay. 1960, it was here. About 6,000 fans, a few more fans in now. Yeah. And uh, LP going to have to call another timeout. Wow. In fact, Larry Johnson's here. He would have been a uh, senior uh, that year, I think. So Cavaliers use their uh, second timeout. We'll take a short break. The LP will have a third and seven after this on 103.9 WLPO. Top Ottawa High School right at the 50 yard line and uh, no score yet and uh, near the 50 is where we're at right now LP has the ball at the Pirate 47 a big third down and seven coming up for LP Braxton Simmons and Gage Starkey are the whiteouts for the Cavaliers Lynch under center in motion is Romanoli fake pitch to Romanoli Lynch going to roll out right and he's going to tuck it Spin away, gets the first down and more. Oh, well, they could, could have, have been a late hit yeah, there. Yeah, could have been. And actually, the Ottawa player looks like he came up worst of it. Yeah, that could have been. He went in late on Lynch, but uh, the Cavs will get the first down carry for Mason Lynch down, down to the, the Pirate 33. 14-yard gain. So LP figuring, you know what, let's put the ball in the hands of our most dangerous uh, player on a third down, and uh, he can run or pass. Lynch ran with it, and he gets the first down. First down at the 
In motion is Romanoli, the pitch to Madrigal. Malik turns it inside, puts his head down. He stood up at about the 32, maybe the 31. Yeah, they'll say the 32, probably one yard for Madrigal. Aguirre and Hurley on the tackle. When uh, Malik's running more standing up, that makes it easier for the defense when you're six foot three. Three carries for 14 for Malik. So second and nine for the Cavaliers. We're now down to about 6.45 to go in this first half. And nothing on the board. LP with uh, their second drive of the night inside Ottawa's side of the football field. Lynch was tripping and he handed off to Romanoli. Oh, Romanoli got it to the 30 then was uh, sent backwards. Aguirre made a real yeah. big hit. Those two have met each other a couple times yeah. tonight already. Romanoli and Aguirre. It seemed like he got a lot, but he only got two yards. Yeah, that. right at the 30. So LP looking at another third and long. Four carries for eight yards for Romanoli. The good LaSalle Peru name isn't Oh, I, I know. I, was, I knew that one, yeah. <laughs> Some of them I don't know, but yeah. Just That's try to it. figure out which letters are silent. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Third and seven coming up for LP here right at the Pirate 30. See if LP goes to the air or not. I, I would highly doubt it. They may be looking at four down territory. Lynch is going to run the option, and he gets looking for blocks. Tries a stiff arm. Uh, defender, he, the ball comes out, but he was already down. Brandon Aguirre with the tackle. Yeah. He already has uh, about eight tackles. And Lynch, nowhere to go. He may have lost half a yard. They put him right back at the 30. So no gain. Fourth and seven for LP at the Ottawa 30-yard line. Aguirre has eight tackles already. Wow. Yeah, he's been all over the place. Yeah. Coming in, he had 25 on the, on the season, so yeah, he's having the best game of his uh, career. Let's see what the Cavaliers call here. You wonder if they'll uh, roll out Lynch again to give him the uh, run pass option. Actually, Lynch is going to, wow, they're going to go Madrigal under center. Lynch is going to be a wing back. This is interesting. And Madrigal, they're going to do a little trickery. Romanoli gets the handoff, and uh, he's going to be short of the first down. Ottawa. Didn't buy it. Abercamp with the tackle. A little uh, trickery by LP. They had a couple different handoffs. Roman only ended up with it, but uh, was short. Well, let's see. No, it's uh, short. They mark it at the 23-yard line. Let's see. It's uh, close. It's I close. Thought, when he went down, I thought, oh, they're going to say first down. Oh, yeah, they are. Just barely, not even a, uh, a measurement. That was a trick play. I don't yeah. even know exactly how that expired. I don't know if, yeah, I don't know if Madrigal even touched the ball. No, I don't think he, he did. Under center. Big so, play. First and 10 LP at the Pirate 23-yard line. That's a play I've not seen LP run all year long. You know, LP's had this ball since the 11:49 oh, yeah. mark. Wow. Yeah. So big-time drive for the Cavaliers. But if you're LP, it uh, doesn't mean much if you don't finish with some points now. Keep in mind, Seth Adams booted a 43-yard field goal okay. last week, so LP's figuring we're in field goal range already. Oh, yeah. Lynch under center. He's going to run the option. Mason turns it inside, and, oh, tackle down about the 17. Early almost got Wrestled the uh, – down. Yeah, almost got the sword collar. So uh, Lynch with a gain of about five, maybe six. LP uh, in the Illinois Valley Credit Union red zone. Now offering Visa cards with interest rates as low as 9.9%. If you live, work, or worship in LaSalle, Bureau, or Putnam counties, you can become an IVCU member. See more now at IVCU.com. Second and four, they'll give Lynch six on the quarterback keeper. LP on the right side of the hash marks here. Lynch with a hard count trying to get the auto offsides. Pirates not biting. They hand it off Ellermeyer off left tackle, and Ellermeyer gets a burst and gets a first down. And the Ottawa's going to say he fumbled it late. The fire officials uh, very animated in saying he was down. So they'll move the chains. Uh, Cavaliers will keep possession. First and 10 LP uh, at the 12 now of Ottawa. Well, you're looking at this thing, Dan, and LP could take this all the way down to the end of the half. Yes, they could. Exactly. That was my point with this. Wow, how long what they've a had drive. This. Almost the whole quarter. Exactly. 
This is reminiscent of like uh, back when we used to play Geneseal in this conference or yeah. Sterling Newman. Yep. Three yards in the cloud of dust type offenses. And there's a handoff, left tackle. That ball was fumbled. Yep. Lynch fell on it. Lynch meant to hand it off to Ellermeyer. So uh, both teams putting the ball on the turf quite a bit tonight. And uh, Mason Lynch fell on it right at the line of scrimmage. So second and 10 as the uh, Ottawa band begins to make their way on the LP side of the field. Fans huddling up tonight, trying to keep warm. Yeah, it's sure hot chocolate's probably pretty popular at oh, the yeah. concession stand. That does sound pretty good. Second down and 10, Lynch under center. Romanoli will go in motion. Lynch keeps it, breaks one tackle, and gets it inside the 10 before the whistle stops. They're going to mark Lynch down about maybe the Pirates' seven. McGuire again with the tackle. I'm going to say more like the six of Ottawa. So he's got 12 carries for 35 yards. So third down and four coming up for the Cavs. The first down marker at the Pirate two. So yes, LP can get a first down here. And we're under two minutes to go in this first half. Third down and four for the Cavaliers. In motion is Madrigal. They go Ellermeyer up the middle, touchdown! Peyton Ellermeyer gets in from Six yards out, that is an LP Cavalier touchdown. And uh, that touchdown is uh, brought to you by Ton of Country Services, doing whatever it takes 24 seven, plumbing, electric, heating and cooling for over a hundred years. Go to tonofcountryservices.com to find out more. What a drive by the Cavaliers. It finishes with a six yard run by Ellermeyer at 138 of the second quarter. So that's almost about a 10 minute drive, then, yeah. a little over 10 minutes. Yes, it was. Wow. That's as long as a drive I've seen in a while. <laughs> and here's the extra point, plenty of distance right down the middle. It is good by the soccer player and uh, star kicker, Seth Adams. That uh, is a Financial Plus Credit Union extra point at Financial Plus Credit Union in Peru, Ottawa, Mendota, Morris and Diamond, they belong to you. And that's the plus at Financial Plus Credit Union. We'll keep it here. 138 to go in this first half, and uh, LP gets on the board after a scoreless first quarter and uh, almost, what, 23 full minutes of no uh, points yeah. being put on the board. Ellermeyer finishes off a drive for the Cavaliers from six yards out. I think a key so far this game is Mortensen is one for five for yeah. zero yards. You know, he came into the game uh, with uh, 800, uh, eight, um, with um, 752 yards, uh, like 120, 120 a game, and uh, so far nothing. And, you know, Levi Sheehan is, is one of our all-time yeah. leading receivers, and I think he's thrown to him once. So yeah. that's a, that's been a key, in my opinion, so far. So the Cavaliers lead 7 to nothing, and Adams will go back to kick. Uh, Seth's had quite a few touchbacks on the season. We'll see if he can put one into the end zone here at Ottawa High. Old Glory not moving too much. No, it's not. Just a little bit. And here is the kick by Adams. Well, Gets under short. it. Might be out of bounds. They're going to yeah. catch it inside the 20. And it'll be brought down at about the 23. The return for the Pirates was uh, Dylan Cortrano. Uh, so uh, he caught it on the run, so he had momentum. Yep. But uh, Cavaliers were there in a hurry. Yeah, a long way from home for Ottawa with 132 left. They're going to start from the, it looks like the 22. They do have, I think, their whole host of timeouts. Yeah, I think they do, they? yes. Yeah. And they are a team that can pass, so yeah. we'll see what uh, the Pirates have in mind here. And they will get the ball to start the second half as well. Yeah, Mortensen hooked up with Price for a 74-yard touchdown a couple games ago. So they'll spread it out with three receivers. Oh yeah, late, uh, Aguirre comes in late for Ottawa. See, this is where Ottawa needs to improve. Uh, that that should have, he should have been out there. Yeah, four receivers for the Pirates. Mortensen uh, gonna pass, looking over the middle, throws, and Burrell for LP got his hands on it, incomplete. And they look for Price, a slant, but Burrell who 
Uh, is LP's top uh, cornerback. There's no doubt about it. He's uh, been very good for the Cavaliers. Two interceptions on the year. And uh, he read Mortensen's eyes all the way there and knocked it away. It would have been enough for a first down, yeah, but it goes incomplete second and 10. Clock stops at 127. And we'll see if Ottawa tries to feed uh, Levi Sheehan. Right on top of him is Tommy Hartman for the Cavs. Mortensen looking, and he rolls right. Throwing deep. He's going to go for Sheehan. It's up for grabs. And knocked away Mason Lynch Good. at the last second. Good job by Lynch. Yeah. Him and Sheehan, a pair of threes went up for it, and Lynch just stripped it away at the last second from Sheehan, and it goes incomplete. So now he's one of, he's one of seven, still no yards for Martinson. And uh, that one was right in front of the uh, Ottawa sideline. Third down and 10 coming up now for the Pirates. 7-0 Cavs over the Pirates as we get close to our St. Margaret's Health halftime show. Dan will have some first half stats. We'll go over some scores. Third down, Mortensen has time throwing over the middle. Caught by Sheehan, but then hit yep. by Lynch and uh, cannot hold on to it. Sheehan's getting up slow. Yeah, it's one of those the receiver who goes over the middle. And have to punt it. Four, four, three and out. So Lynch will, and this is dangerous. Lynch will oh, now yeah. get it at around sure the is. 50 for LP. And again, Cavaliers have a, a good kicker in Seth Adams. Back at a, just outside his own five yard line will be the audible punter. Cam Lewis. Cam Loomis. He had 26 on his first one. And LP brings some heat again. He gets it away. And it's going to bounce out of bounds at about the 46. So LP will take over at the uh, Pirate 46. 20, 25 yard punt. 106 to go. The Cavs just have one timeout, though. They used two um, almost back to back in the, earlier in this half on offense. So the market at the Pirate 47 yard line. First and 10. So, again, if you're LP, you're thinking if we can get it to about the 30, that might be in the range at least for a decent attempt at a field goal from Seth Adams. Right. Which, the way this game's going, if you can get up by two possessions, yeah. that would be big. Exactly. Lynch under center, and he's going to pass. Throws incomplete. Didn't have anybody open. Uh, the closest receiver was uh, Gage Starkey, but just not a lot of room over on that side of the field. There was a lot uh, a lot of players. LP actually had, uh, looks like, max protection. They had two or three guys in front of Lynch blocking for him. But uh, credit Lynch in not trying to force something and just right. fired it into the LP sideline for an incomplete pass, and only a few seconds came off the clock. 1.02 to go in the first half. Gay, uh, Braxton Simmons split out wide left. Gage Starkey is a uh, receiver. They're going to pitch it to Romanoli. Uh, he turns it inside. And guess who? He runs into Aguirre again. Yep. Down to the 44. That's a gain of three for Ottawa. You'll you'll more than be more than happy with that. Yeah, that's 11th tackle for Aguirre. So it's third and seven. LP's going to use their last time out. So 43 and a half seconds to go here in the half. See if the Cavaliers have another trick up their trick play up their sleeve. Last time they had a third and long, they ran that play where Madrigal lined up as quarterback. And uh, they had two or three guys touch the ball at one point. Again, if you're LP, you're hoping to get a first down here. And then have a shot at, again, trying to get it maybe near the 30-yard line or so for Seth Adams to attempt the field goal. The Pirates, you're hoping to stop him here and go into the break 7-0. We're not even to 8 o'clock yet. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Between LP and Ottawa. Cavaliers and uh, Pirates break out of their timeouts. 
So we'll see what the Cavaliers call. Madrigal not in uh, the lineup for the Cavaliers. Eller Myers the back along with Billy Minnie and Brady Romanoli. Punch formation for the Cavaliers. And Lynch rolling right using his speed. Bose is after him. Just going to try to outrun the Pirate defenders, and he will. He outruns them. Just used his uh, talent, his speed, and got down to about the 33. And there's 33 seconds to go. He stayed in bounds, or did he get out of bounds to stop the clock? Let's see. The clock will stop, obviously, as they move the chains. LPs quickly to the line of scrimmage. Down to the 32. Yeah. Uh, 34 seconds left till half. Well, he did get out of bounds, so LP can go ahead and huddle now. All right, that's a big break for the Cavaliers. Again, they have no timeouts. They're going to have to maybe spike the ball at some point here if they run a play and stay in bounds. Pitch to Romanoli, and Brady gets some yardage, and he gets pushed out of bounds. Down about the 27, and that was a quick gain of five, maybe six yards for the Cavs. Still 29 seconds left. They're kind of utilizing, Dan, that short side of the field. Yeah, they are. Where they're, uh, they're more than happy to get quick yardage and get out of bounds, use their speed. That's 14 carries for 53 yards for Lynch. So second down and a six. I think that was Romanoli, Dan. The guy oh, was it? I'm sorry. Yep, yep. Oh. Okay. He got the pitch from uh, Lynch on that play. And Romanoli will go in motion, number 13, and he gets it again. And similar play, and he evades some uh, Ottawa defenders and steps out of bounds. Uh, and he'll move the chains in, in 24 seconds. And LP, just like that, is in the 19-yard line wow. in the Illinois Valley Credit Union red zone. Now, if you're LP, you're looking, well, maybe we don't settle for a field goal here. We're the Rome only eight carries, 31 yards. He's had a couple big carries in a row for LP to give them a first down. 24 seconds exactly left in the half. 7-0 Cavaliers. Cavaliers looking to add to their lead. Simmons and Starkey are the receivers. Allemeyer lined up behind Lynch. Romanoli in motion again. Fake pitch to Romanoli. Lynch rolling left. Throwing into the end zone, and it's caught, but... Nope. You know, I've been the back of the end zone. It Price been, caught it, but out of bounds. Yep. Intercepted, but out of bounds. In the back of the end zone, Simmons was the intended receiver for the Cavaliers. Nice effort by Price, but, yeah, it was in the back of the end zone and uh, could not stay in bounds. Incomplete, that play took less than seven seconds. Yeah, if you're LP, uh, that's what I'm thinking, Dan. I think LP's figuring let's not do anything silly here because we're in field goal range with our kicker. Right. So maybe they try another pass towards the end zone. Yeah, they don't want an, inter they don't want an interception. No, so. that's, the, yeah, that's, yeah, that's right. A, if that's you are going to throw an incomplete or uh, throw it out of bounds right. or, or like that in the back of the end zone. They go Romanoli, and uh, he goes the outside, and guess what? He gets out of bounds. Uh, not as big of a gain as the previous ones, but down to maybe the 16. Looks like maybe the 15. 15-yard line yep. gain of four. 13 seconds. And ball spotted right at the 15-yard line. Oh, they're going to bring Seth Adams out for the field goal. So a 33-yard uh, field goal attempt coming up for Seth Adams on a third down. They're not going to take a chance on a uh, – that's probably a smart thing to do. Right. They have no I timeouts. Agree. Yep, 33-yarder from the right hash mark for Seth Adams. 33 or so Made a 43-yarder last week. The snap is low. The kick is up. Plenty of distance, and it is good. Seth Adams boots a 33-yard field goal, and what a drive. For LP, just the fact to, to do what they needed to do, get enough yardage, save some time with eight seconds left. Seth Adams boots a field goal, and the way this game's looking, where points are at a premium, the Cavaliers lead now 10 to nothing. It's a big three points because now Ottawa has to, can't just tie it with a, right. with a, with a touchdown. Uh, like I say, Loomis has tried one field goal this year, and uh, and Ottawa's averaging 30 points a game, and so far they're shut out. So uh, this has been a great defensive effort by LP. 
10 to nothing, the Cavaliers with the lead over the Pirates. And if you missed at the beginning, I mean, the Pirates were threatening early on, yeah. but they had a fumble on their opening drive. They were uh, really in tune, although, as Dan mentioned, they just have not been able to get their uh, passing game going tonight. Yeah, but one of eight for zero yards. And uh, Adams will do the kick. He actually missed one game this year, Dan, because he is a soccer player, and they had oh. a Friday game, and that's his first priority of soccer. Right. So Loomis was a soccer player, but he switched over full-time football. Popped up at about the 10. Catrano at the 15 to 20. And going to be wrestled down shy of the 25. Imany was there for LP. Like one, one play for Ottawa. I don't know what they'll do yeah. with it. They might just take a knee. Three and a half seconds to go. So we're coming up on our St. Margaret's Health halftime show. And uh, we'll have uh, Dan with some numbers. We'll go over a subway scoreboard update. I got a list. We'll go over some of the activities coming up this weekend of LP Sports. Is, uh, crazy enough. I mean, fall sports. Not quite coming to an end, but man. Uh, they're just going to take a knee. Yep, they are going to take a knee. So we're going to go to half. There was uh, no score in the first. The Cavaliers with two impressive drives in the second. One a very long, time-consuming drive. The other one a short, quick drive that set up a second score. 10-0 LP over Ottawa. We'll come back with the St. Margaret's Health Halftime Show after this on your home for Cavalier football, 103.9 WLPO. Full Circle Industrial knows there are many things that can stop your business cold. That's why they offer a variety of products and services to keep you going. Which of these two pieces of equipment do you think will run the longest? FCI not only fixes your equipment, they can find and fix the problem before breakdown happens. And speaking of cold, FCI is proud to offer these de-icer and ice prevention solutions. Search Full Circle Industrial in Oglesby and see everything FCI can do for you today. When you need a new appliance, think Grazier's Plumbing and Heating in McNabb. Look at this impressive list of brands Grazier's offers. From kitchen to laundry, appliances at Grazier's may just be the best kept secret in McNabb. Gergovich Family Chiropractic in LaSalle is a proud supporter of high school sports. Dr. Gergovich utilizes the most advanced technology to provide effective care for men, women, and children of all ages. Whether you're getting down in a three-point stance, getting down off a ladder, or getting down on a dance floor, you need a chiropractor on your health care team. Search Gergovich Family Chiropractic today to see all the ways having Dr. Gergovich on your team can help you be happier, healthier, and pain-free.
Next, we will feature the Pirate Pines and their routine to Soulplay Pink Spirit by a first rock band around. Soulplay Pink Spirit was their most famous hit, charting high on the biggest hit charts around the world in 1991 and 1992. They have charts in Belgium, France, New Zealand, and Spain. Smash and Pines are wearing pink for Rust Pizza Awareness Month. They are dancing to remember those who lost for breast cancer and to celebrate those who have survived. And support those who love who are still fighting today. The pop girls are wearing blue ribbon in support of their classmate Landon in this fight for cancer. The pop her times are coached by Bill Weatherford. Tonight's routine was choreographed by the juniors, Caroline Cody, the fellow Peter Army, Ruben Satellite, and Melanie Simpson.
Tonight, we close our show with Firework by Katie Perry. The song was commercially successful. Three is number one in the Billboard Hot 100 and the top five on 20 charts around the world. Firework has sold over one million copies in the United Kingdom and was certified 12 times platinum by the Recording Industry Association of America for a shipment of over 12 million copies in the United States.
You gotta call Grazers. Your water is running, it just won't stop. What do you do? You gotta call Grazers for heating and cooling. What do you do? Give us a call. You gotta call Grazers. We're the ones who can stop the drips and the drip, drip drops. Winter, summer, spring, and fall. When you need us, give us a call. You gotta call Grazers. 8221111. My uh, jacket on. I'm with you. I came. I had my jacket on once I got here today, and I'm actually upgraded. I'm beyond the light jacket phase now. I'm already yeah, in my got, north phase, which is. I'm at tailgate tomorrow at U of I, but uh, that's then 6:30 kickoff, so it'll be from like 1 to 5:30. Trying to figure out how many layers I'm going to need. <laughs> well, should, or you're further south, Dan. It should yeah. be a little warmer yeah, down in okay. Champaign. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, it should be a lot of fun uh, tomorrow night. Probably the biggest game for U of I football. It in is. Quite a uh, while. They're three and a half point favorites, and and, yeah. and really, the, there's some excitement. They're really trying to sell out Memorial Stadium, which is sixty thousand five hundred. Mm-hmm. They haven't done it in years, and uh, they've been really pushing all week. I heard, I saw one uh, blog that said that they were down to like five thousand okay. unsold tickets, but we'll see. I'm used to thirty thousand <laughs> <laughs> after seventy eight thousand last week up in Wisconsin. Sure. We're back here with the St. Margaret's Health Halftime Show, and we're going to get now the uh, Gergovich Family Chiropractic Second Half Adjustment. Everyone needs a chiropractor on their health care team. Go to gergovich.com to see all the ways having a chiropractor on your team can help you on your way to a healthy lifestyle. Well, I think for the LP Cavaliers, obviously on defense, you keep doing what you're doing, but right. you got to figure Ottawa's going to try something a little different to get their passing game right. going. Um, so LP's going to have to look for that as far as an adjustment. If you're Ottawa, Dan, what are you thinking? Obviously, you need to get on the board. And, yeah, and maybe you know, on this first possession. Yeah, they 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 get the kickoff. That's a key. They they've got to combine the passing and the rushing. You know, they're averaging uh, 126 yards a game in the air, zero so far. So they could, you know, if they can get one to Sheehan, maybe, and then maybe a nice long one from Alexander or Ryder Miller. Uh, just get just get a few first downs and get get it rolling. That's your Gergovich uh, Family Chiropractic second half adjustment. Uh, the Cavaliers leading the Pirates 10 to nothing as we wrap up the St. Margaret's Health halftime show. And by the way, my partner's first half stats were brought to you by First Federal Savings Bank. You'll score a personal or business touchdown whenever you work with First Federal Savings Bank in both Peru and Ottawa. So Ottawa won the coin toss and deferred. So they will get the ball to start the second half. And we're about set to we start the second half. 10 nothing. LP over the Ottawa Pirates. And uh, thanks for joining us on not only the radio, but of course on their uh, HD video broadcast on the Star Rock Media YouTube channel. And uh, thanks a lot to Grazers Plumbing and Heating. And thanks a lot, obviously, Zach Shaw and Maddie Wilkin uh, doing the camera work tonight for LP and Ottawa. Check it out. Just go to YouTube.com, search Star Rock Media and subscribe, and you can watch uh, the LP and Ottawa game in high definition. And, Dan, it's one of the few subscriptions where you don't have to get suckered in and pay for it. Okay, that's Those cool. are always that's a nice cool. subscription, isn't it? It is, it is. I noticed <laughs> we have a female referee tonight. Yeah, that's great to see. Yeah, and uh, she did. they did the same crew. Yeah, the they did the first off game. game. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Maybe that's why this game's moving right along. Yeah, it's, exactly. You it turns get into home. a long night for them. Yeah. It sure does. So here we go. Seth Adams kicks it. Underway, angling towards out of bounds, and that's going to be a penalty. So Ottawa started the game uh, kicking it out of bounds, and now LP starts the second half by booting the ball out of bounds. So the Pirates will have good starting field position at their own 35-yard line. Seth Adams got to be a bit disappointed yeah. uh, with that. Uh, it's, again, he's a guy that's had some touchbacks more really? times than not this year. Yeah. So maybe that was planned to not really uh, – I don't think it was planned to kick it out of bounds, no. but – Maybe try to kick it short, 15, 20 yard line. Ottawa doesn't really have much of a return game. Yeah. They don't have a Herm- Michael Hermer C. <laughs> no. X specialist. First and 10, Ottawa at their own 35 yard line. As we get the second half rolling, Jeremy Aiken, Dan Isles from Ottawa High School. Big, big win for either team here. A fifth win would make uh, you playoff eligible, and from all the sounds of it, pretty much 
would put you in the playoffs this year. They run a jet sweep to Alexander, turns the corner and goes out of bounds. He looked like he might have hurt his leg yeah. on that. Because it looked like he had some more running room. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. Uh, has he got a hold penalty? Oh, is, no. No. Yeah, the market at the 42. Nope, he looks it. okay. Yeah. I think I, he thought there was maybe. It yeah. was kind of weird. Yeah. He just like, stopped running. Look like he could have had a few more yards on yeah. the play. Uh, as it was, a nice gain of about seven. Second That's the down. stuff Ottawa's got to do to win this game. Clock stopped as he did run out of bounds. No penalties. Four receivers. Now they uh, empty the backfield, go five receivers. Again, Ottawa, you think, would give some different looks as they were held scoreless in the first half. And Mortensen throws, and it's caught at the 40. And he's out Price. about the 45. Price brought down by Morton. Mortensen was hit hard after releasing the ball. No flags on the play. And that's a first down. Well, i got to say he's just inches short. I get out first down. Yeah. Right at the 45-yard line. So there you go. Ottawa comes out. And too quick. Uh, chunks of yardage, and they move the chains, and they're quick to the line. First we do that a lot. Yards. Five receivers, empty backfield. Mortensen looking to throw. Uh-oh, they're going to be a, maybe a false start in Ottawa. I think so. Offsides on LP, maybe. Yeah, offside from yeah. LP. I get LP six penalties for 50 yards, and Ottawa just has two for 20. So the penalty situation for Ottawa hasn't been a problem tonight like it has during the season. So that'll move it up to midfield. It's first and five now for the Pirates as uh, they made some adjustments and uh, coming out, speeding things up yeah, on they, this opening They drive. tend to do that, especially in the second half. First and five, Ottawa right at midfield. Three receivers set now for the Pirates. Not quite spread out like before. Mortensen's going to throw out in the flat. It's caught Sheehan. by Sheehan, 45. He's fast. Brought down at about the 40. He's got the first down. And uh, there's an injured Cavalier. Slow getting up. He's okay. 15-yard gain there. Looks like Hartman for LP. Tommy Hartman. As uh, the official Seattle Hartman will limp off the field for the Cavaliers. One of their secondary players. So Ottawa's ready to go right back on the line of scrimmage after the uh, quick pass to Sheehan. First catch of the night, Dan, is that yep, right? Yep, first catch of the night for Sheehan. Yep. First and 10, they throw it out to Sheehan again at the 40, and he's pushed out of bounds. They'll mark it all the way down. Well, they're going to bring him back a little bit now. Five. To the 35, so just quick hits now to get Sheehan involved. Yeah, um, really. Because once he catches it, he's as, he's as quick as Alexander. Two fastest kids on the team. Second and five. So LP uh, kind of got these quick chunk plays by running it. Ottawa's doing it by the quick pass plays to their receivers. Now Sheehan goes to the right of Mortensen. Second and five. They'll hand it off Alexander, Nothing. and he runs right into big Warren Rowicki. <laughs> <laughs> wow. The big guy just tossed Alexander backwards. Big old 76 for LP. 6 one, three, 15. Yeah, he threw Alexander a few yards back. Yeah, he did. He lost the yard. So third down and six coming up for Ottawa. Nine carries for 45 yards for Alexander. Got to believe Ottawa's looking at this as a four down situation. Oh, yeah. I'd say for sure, even though it's only the third yeah. quarter, they've got a score here. Ten minutes to go. Ottawa down 10 zip. Four receivers for Mortensen. He's empty backfield. He's going to run it. Nope. Throws a quick pass. And it was kind of high and behind Sheehan. So an incomplete pass. Mortensen had the option. I guess with the, in the NFL you hear that the read option. Right. And that in that case, if Sheehan would have caught it, he had some open uh, yeah. territory there. So just thrown behind him. Now yeah. That's Mortens. Mortensen's got to do a better job than that. Yep. So he's he's got uh, – Four, uh, four for 12 for 23 yards for Kobe Mortensen. Fourth and six for Ottawa. Big play here. Yep. 9.56 to go in the third quarter. Over the middle. Knocked away by Antonio Rodriguez, the linebacker. He thought he might have had a pick six if he could have held on to it. But uh, nevertheless, a big stop by the LP defense and turnover on downs for the Pirates. 
So you know, that's uh, that's usually when Ottawa scores, and then something like this, and LP's done a great job. So Antonio Rodriguez, who will definitely be up uh, for all-conference discussion, makes a big play from his linebacker spot for the Cavaliers. First and 10 LP, they take over at their own 36-yard line. And, boy, the, oh, the Pirates going to have to call a timeout. Wow. I don't know for sure what's going on Must there. Must not have the right person. You know what? I'm not so sure they had 10 11. Guys? I think they only yeah. had three. Four. Yep, they only had 10 guys. Wow. So we'll see if that comes back to to haunt the Pirates later on. Yes. 10 to nothing, uh, 9.53 to go here in the third. LP maintaining the lead. LP's pretty, has done a pretty good job, uh, you know, as far as Ottawa's rushing game, too. Ottawa, yeah. You know, Ottawa's only got uh, 50, 58 yards in rushing. Um, you know, they came into the game averaging uh, 150 167 yards a game on the ground. So uh, they've done a great great job all the way around on defense. Subway scoreboard update, and uh, we have another score from the Interstate 8. Uh, running clock, Morris leading Woodstock 41 to nothing. That's good for Ottawa, I guess, in a way. The Morris probably uh, pretty angry tonight. Oh, yeah. I bet they last were. Week. Uh, uh, exactly. <laughs> and handoff up the middle, and there is, I believe it was Madrigal. We'll see the uh, pile unfurl here. And it was either Madrigal or Ellermeyer. It was 20, that's 20 Ellermeyer with the carry. And uh, boy, he gets good seven yards on that. Aguirre again with the tackle. Another score, uh, Reed Custer, 14-6 over Streeter. So the Bulldogs hanging, hanging in, there. in there with Reed Custer, who yeah. is a top five team in 3A, ranked ahead of Princeton. Second and three for LP. They go right back to Ellermeyer, and uh, he's got a first down. Needed to get to the 46 and got to the 47. He wears those long white sleeves, so he kind of sticks out. Yeah. A few players got the long sleeves tonight for uh, LP. And Ottawa's got a few guys, too, wearing the long sleeves, whether they're white or red. Eight carries for 34 for Ellermeyer. That's probably about his average, I would say, you know, three, four yards. Lynch under center for the Cavaliers as they move the chains, and they go right back to Ellermeyer, and he crosses midfield and plows his way ahead to the Pirate 47-yard line. So that's a gain of about six. And here you go again, Dan. If you're Ottawa, you're thinking, uh-oh, this could be that, that first scoring drive for LP where they just... Frankly, if LP scores here, I think they got the game won. Yeah. I just, I'm saying that right now. It just. By the way, guess who made that tackle? Guire. <laughs> He's up to 13. He's, he's having a really good game, but the Pirates defensively are just giving up too much yardage. Second down and a four for LP. LP trying to shorten the game here with another long drive. They go right back to Ellermeyer, and uh, forward progress should get him down about the 45, close to the 44. Got one. So LP just playing smash mouth football right now on offense, at least on this drive. Third down and three coming up for the Cavaliers. And uh, these drives too just take uh, the, the Pirate fans out of the game. Yes, the home exactly. fans just kind of lull, lull them to sleep here on this cold night. Third and three for LP. Lynch is gonna keep it, puts his head down and boy, it depends on where they uh, spot it. The official closest to us is uh, nowhere near the first down. Again. Really only giving Lynch about one yard on the carry. Yeah, again, Aguirre, tackle. So fourth and a long, uh, fourth and a solid two for the Cavaliers now. The big play right here, folks. Yep. They get that first down and, you know, keep driving towards, the, they're just eating up the clock, too. Interesting call here. Uh, LP may... You can make an argument for your defense being as good as LP's has been to pin Ottawa down yeah. and make them drive, you know, 90-plus yards. Right. I agree. So we'll see. I think LP's, though, going to go for it. If you're Ottawa, you got to watch the hard count and not jump off sides. That's what oh, Lynch is going to run. You got and it. And he runs off right side and does get the first down. My partner was right on that. He needed two and got about two and a half, maybe three yards on the carry. Down to the 41 of Ottawa, Lynch, the quarterback keeper. Again, LP just putting the ball in the hands of their best playmaker on a big fourth down run. 
He's carried 15 times for 51. And that was a big play there. Yeah. First and 10 LP at the 41 of Ottawa. Lynch going to pitch it to Madrigal. Malik, 40, 35, still going. And uh, hit down inside the 30. So Madrigal had uh, thoughts of breaking it and taking it all to the house there. Yeah, Cotrano made a, oh boy, there's a an touch, Ottawa. touchdown saving catch, and that might be. I wonder be. if he's the one hurt. He might it was be. quite a collision. He went down, uh, took Madrigal out at about the knee. A clean hit, but uh, it was definitely a hit. And good to see Madrigal was okay out of that. I hope he hit him maybe right into the I knee. I think it is. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is Quatrano. I'm looking to see if there's a seven standing there. I don't see it. So there's a pirate player down in the field. We'll take a break. 621 to go in the third injury timeout. LP leading Ottawa 10-0. Your home for Cavalier football is 1039 WLPO. With some assistance from the trainer. So uh, the Ottawa Pirate player, Dylan Quatrano, senior. Injured on the play, and uh, it'll be first and 10 now for the Cavaliers. Right at the Pirate 30 yard line. 10 to nothing LP with the lead. Cavaliers on the move. Ryan. Um, Lynch under center, and he's going to pitch it to Madrigal. Malik, stiff arms the defender, 25-20. Spins down inside the 15-yard line, a hard big-time run by Malik Madrigal. Stiff arm to Pirate defender, gets the first down, and the chain's moving as the Cavaliers are back in the Illinois Valley Credit Union red zone. He's down to the, to the nine. Or let's see, well, looks like they're going to mark it at the – no, I made it 14. I'm yep, sorry. 14 yard line, first and uh, 10 for the Cavaliers. He was pushed out of bounds. The clock stops at exactly six minutes to go here in the third. 41 yards on five carries. He wow. stiffed arm Price, yeah. and uh, Ryder Miller finally took him out of bounds. So Madrigal's had some big carries for the Cavaliers. Not a lot, but some big ones. And they go back to Madrigal, and he is turning his way down. To the five yard line near the first down, Malik Madrigal. He barely uh, ran the ball in the first half and to have that big of a guy come at you pretty fresh in the second half out of the backfield is tough. Give him nine yards on that carry. Ball spotted right at the five of Ottawa. Second down and one. The, the Cavs can get a first down here. Madrigal again behind Lynch, Romanoli. Uh, and they go back to Madrigal. He's got the first down to about the two of Ottawa. So they'll move the chains. Just another methodical drive for the Cavaliers tonight. First and goal, uh, LP threatening to get up to three possessions if they can score here and then add the extra point. Lynch under center. Let's see if they can call Madrigal's number. He's been the main uh, player on this drive. 
They do, oh, yep, they do give it to Madrigal. Touchdown, LP, Malik Madrigal, two yard touchdown run. And uh, that touchdown brought to you by Ton of Country Services, doing whatever it takes 24 seven. Plumbing, electric, heating and cooling for over a hundred years. Go to tonofcountryservices.com to find out more. Two yard touchdown run, Malik Madrigal for LP. The Cavaliers lead 16 to nothing and this becomes a very important extra point. This makes it a three score game if Seth Adams can boot this one through. And he does. So a big, big extra point for Seth Adams. That is a financial plus credit union extra point. They belong to you. And that's the plus at Financial Plus Credit Union in Peru, Ottawa, Mendota, Morris, and Diamond. We'll keep it right here. The Cavaliers get a three possession lead now, 17 to nothing over Ottawa. And we'll check some uh, subway scoreboard update. Look for some more scores here. Mentioned uh, Streeter was playing Reed Custer, 14 to six at last check of that one. Eight man football, Blue Ridge 30 to 14 over uh, Flanagan Cornell Woodland. Let's get a uh, Princeton St. Bede score and uh, shocker of the night. And I mean that sarcastically, Princeton has another running clock. The wow. Tigers have gotten up by 49 to seven over St. Bede halfway through the third quarter. That's unbelievable. So uh, St. Bede came into that one six and oh but uh, the Princeton Tigers rolling one again, uh, once again. Mentioned Morris is running the clock on uh, Woodstock. And we're back underway. Adams with a line drive kick, and it's inside the five, 10, 15. And nice return uh, for the Ottawa ball care at about the 27, 28 yard line. That was uh, Kevon Peterson. Peterson. Yep. He's a backup running back. Thought for a moment it might bounce into the end zone, but he picked it up just inside the five and returned it for about 23, 24 yards. The market at the Pirate 28 yard line. 17 nothing LP, 448 to go in the third. LP shut out Ottawa last year. Can they do it yeah. again this year? Yep. They shut him out in the freshman sophomore game yeah, tonight as well. 22, 22 to nothing. nothing. And they're going to hand it off. Nothing. And the ball came oh. loose. Oh, they're going to save. So he was down. Wow. Okay. So nothing there for Lost Alexander. Down at the 27. Second and 11 for Ottawa. Ottawa has five yards rushing the second half so far. See if Ottawa goes back to a spread four or five receiver set. They were having a little bit of success with that. Just a quick pass has finally got Sheehan involved at least. Second and 11. Morrison going to pass and they get it out to Sheehan. He's at the 30 and uh, fumbles it. Goes out of bounds. Lynch ripped it out of uh, the grasp of Sheehan. That's a great matchup with Lynch and Sheehan. Yeah, it is. And a break for Ottawa. The ball fumbled past the uh, first down Jeez, marker. You don't see that very often. No. So first down and 10 for the Pirates, and the clock will stop. It's at the 39-yard line. So that was a 12-yard pass, as it turned out. But if you're Ottawa, you love that, having Sheehan uh, out in the open field. If you're LP, uh, you love to have Mason Lynch be the one guy out there. And uh, first and 10 for Ottawa, though. Nice completion by Mortensen to Sheehan. 4.02 to go here in the third. Still plenty of time in this football game. And Mortensen's under pressure. Throws it over the middle, and it is incomplete. He just threw that up in the air. Oh, man, there was a lot of uh, contact there. Yeah, yeah on Rewicki, both sides. Rewicki and Lorden were there. Mortensen a little slow getting up. Back deep for LP, looked like Caleb Kennedy, number 11. There was a lot of pushing and shoving there, but Mortensen just threw that up for grabs. Yeah, he's, he's lucky he didn't get intercepted. Four for, four for 15 right now for 35 yards. Not a good percentage, that's for sure. Yeah, four for 15. Yeah, you like to say he came in the game 44-73. Uh, 
Second and 10, 3.55 to go. Three receivers this time for the Pirates. Alexander to the right of Mortensen in the backfield. And they're going to hand it off to Alexander. Just swallowed up immediately. Lorton was in the backfield. Imany as well. Alexander just went down to really avoid the hit. We lost like almost three yards. Yes, third down and 12, maybe 13 on the play now. Ball spotted back just outside the Ottawa 36. Yeah, yeah just nothing there uh, running uh, the football for Ottawa. Now an obvious passing situation at third and 12. Uh, Alexander's last three runs, minus one, minus one, minus two. So that tells you LP's doing a good job yep. of stopping uh, Ottawa's attempted running game. Third and 12, Otta, or LP showing a rush blitz here. And Mortensen going to throw. He's in trouble and going to be brought down by Medina at the 35-yard line, the sophomore linebacker with the sack. The standout sophomore for LP, the coach's son, Medina with the sack as LP brought some heat and the pocket broke down and Ottawa is going to have to punt it away to the Cavaliers. Loomis back out to punt for Ottawa. It's had a 26-yarder and a 25-yarder so far. And I will have to say, uh, and uh, Zach will appreciate this, Dan. I don't know, were you ever a fan of the Hollywood, Halloween movies, Dan? No. The fact that the punter's name is Loomis this time of the year is... No, uh, said, um, that, um, that was the guy who was trying to get Michael Myers, was Dr. Loomis, yeah. There's the punt to Lynch. He uh, goes backwards and uh, goes down. And uh, getting the credit for the tackle for Ottawa was Connor Price. If you're LP, you're okay with that. You don't want Lynch getting hurt on the, the punt or kick return. 37-yard punt. So that sets LP up at their own 23-yard line to start this drive. 2.16 to go. 17 to nothing LP over their old rivals Ottawa here at King Field. First and 10 for the Cavaliers as they seek another just time-consuming drive. Lynch uh, going to go to Ellermeyer. Ellermeyer Not protecting the there. football now. He just kind of fell backwards to the 25. Two yards for Ellermeyer. But if you're LP, you look at it, you know, that's probably going to take about almost a whole other minute off the clock. Yeah. And again, two. Under two minutes now, Ellemeyer checks out. Madrigal back in. Second and eight for the Cavs. Ball at their own 25-yard line. And Lynch hands it off to Madrigal. And uh, Madrigal gets two, maybe three. Holding on for dear life. Charles Medro and yeah. uh, Wesley Abercamp. Medro, you can't miss with his uh, his locks, Long his hair. hair yeah. Yeah. He's got eight, nine tackles on the night. So give uh, Madrigal about three before his forward progress was stopped. Nine carries for uh, 58 yards for Madrigal. It's going to be about a minute left in this third quarter when the ball is snapped to Mason Lynch. And he's going to pitch it to Madrigal. And Madrigal is not going to get any. He fumbles it. Stripped away by Aguirre. And he gets it inside the 15. Aguirre just took it right away from Madrigal. Third turnover over the night for LP, and that's a big one. Aguirre just stripped it right from him, Dan. Yeah, it was Aguirre and also um, uh, Perez, uh, yeah. Alex Perez, uh, both had... Uh, Madrigal uh, behind the line of scrimmage, and McGuire just ripped it out of Madrigal's hand. Just used his strength and took it right away from Madrigal. And Ottawa in business in the Illinois Valley Credit Union red zone, first and 10 at the Cavalier 14 yard line. 14, uh, 47 and a half seconds to go in the third. Mortensen going to pitch it to Alexander. Gets around the corner, and he's going to be running out of bounds. At the uh, eight yard line of LP, so gain of six. And Alexander with his best run in quite a while as they yeah. ran to the outside. 
They're not finding much luck running up the gut against LP. No, they, he had that 24-yarder, and that's been about it. That was his longest one by easily of the second half. He's down to the eight. He gained six. Clock stops with 42 seconds to go. Second down and four for Ottawa at the Cavalier eight-yard line. Ottawa can get a first down. They hand it off Alexander, and Rowicki grabs him, and Madrigal helps him out. Ball comes loose, but Maybe he was two. on the turf. And it'll be third and short now for Ottawa, third and two. Let's we'll see if they get this last play off before the end of the quarter. Ball spotted at the LP six-yard line. See, you don't seem to be in a big up. hurry. There's no wind, so it yeah. doesn't really matter. And they will get this last play off of the third quarter. Third and two from the Cavaliers six. They hand it off to Alexander. Taken down, Antonio Rodriguez was there. And following him up was Connor Lorden. So he lost three. Yep, Cavalier defense was all over that one. And that ends the third quarter. The Cavaliers added their lead in that quarter. We head to the uh, final 12 minutes. LP 17, Ottawa nothing. The Pirates will have a huge fourth down inside the Cavalier 10 when we come back. Your home for LP Cavalier football is 103.9 WLPO. Come see your friends at First State Bank. There's a certain satisfaction you get when you know you have a friend to turn to. You have a place to go Year after year, day after day When you need a helping hand, we're along the way Come see your friends at First State Bank Member FDIC Welcome to KC Marketing, your digital marketing agency. KC Marketing specializes in providing affordable online solutions for your business. From graphic design and social media marketing to custom website development. Put the power of KC Marketing to work for you. Search KC Marketing Agency now to get started. The pink field. Go from the west end of the field to the east end. I said the score where has nine, but for the eight, but I think that's more on the yeah, nine. Yeah, you're right, yeah. I, I'd say it's on the nine. Yep, and the first down marker is around the four, so yeah. I'd say a solid five yards. Yes. Empty backfield for Mortensen. Here we go for Ottawa, huge play. Mortensen going to throw it towards the end zone. Sheehan catches it. it. Touchdown. So Sheehan got open. Lynch lost him for LP. And an eight-yard touchdown pass. I'm going to say Mortensen. it's nine. You're, yeah, that's right, nine yards. Sheehan from Mortensen. That ties Sheehan for the all-time uh, leader in touchdown catches with Cody Stokes with 11. Cody Stokes was a, a multiple athlete. Of course, he started in basketball for Ottawa back in the 2011-2012 time. Cam Loomis with the extra point attempt. Plenty of leg and gets it. So Ottawa takes advantage of the turnover by the Cavaliers. And it is now 17 to seven. So that field goal are looming really large oh, yeah. at the end of the half. 17-7 Ottawa over LP. We'll keep it right here. First play of the fourth quarter. Uh, speaking of fourth quarter, uh, Hall jumps ahead of Sterling Newman, 18 to 14. So the Red Devils looking to get to four and three in their quest for the playoffs. They were one and eight last year, but uh, Randy Teeman back for a second go around for the Hall Red Devils. And uh, no doubt uh, the Red Devils are heading uh, back on the right track. They have uh, one of the top players in the area, Mac Resetic, who's been putting uh, up silly numbers for Hall this year. So hopefully the Red Down Devils the can finish that one off against the Newman Comets. We can have that for now. Newman would fall to three and four, Dan, and I don't know, yeah, but I wonder when the last time Sterling Newman has missed the playoffs. Oh, boy. I was trying to. I was, <laughs> Decades, probably? Yeah, I was trying to show Charlie Ellerbrock that, about the fact that uh, Sheehan yeah. just tied the school record. It was pretty cool. And he's got, oh, he's got, well, how many catches? Well, I don't have it in front of me now. Charlie's got it. But he's getting close to 
uh, catches all time. Uh, I think he's almost second now, and I don't think he, I'm not so sure he'll catch the the uh, yardage because uh, that's that's over a thousand. But anyway, uh, ni nice nice uh, drive there after the turnover, and and now that like you say, I think that uh, field goal is really yeah. looming big. 17 to seven, still plenty of time to go. Ottawa did use one timeout in the uh, beginning yeah. of the third quarter. Romanoli for LP will catch it at the seven, the 10, the 15, gets a big block, 20, 25, still on his feet, and tackled down at about the 28 yard line. Charlie Medrow, he's had a good game. And I'm gonna say a good game too had by both teams and the officials, Dan, I was thinking, you know, you can't watch an NFL game on a Sunday and seemingly every kick and punt return, there's flags. Right. Uh, this has been a well-played game by these two rivals. Uh, there hasn't been a lot, a lot of after the play uh, skirmishes, nothing like that. Right, I agree. Uh, it's been pretty uh, rewarding to see that on both sides. Now we'll see how the fourth quarter plays out as we have ourselves a brand new ball game, 17 to seven, LP with the ball. They put it on the field, uh, the turf last time. They're going to hand it off Ellermeyer and Charlie Medrow again. Yep, nothing there. Got back to the line of scrimmage, and that was it. And one wonders if LP uh, will probably stick with Ellermeyer because he seems to be a little more sure handed than Madrigal. Madrigal fumbled the last time. Right mm -hmm. now, if you're LP, that's the most important thing is just to hold on to the football. Yeah, I agree. No gain on that one. At the same time, Dan, if you're LP, you can't really just play not to lose. You, no. you don't want to lose that aggressiveness. Well, LP's game thus far has been ball control, yeah, that's, and, yeah, and, and yeah. that's what they have to do here. They yeah. have to eat some uh, time off this clock because they're up by 10 points. You know, they, they, they're they they're in command here. And Lynch is going to run the option, and he goes down. I don't know if he was tripped up or just lost his footing. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there. Yeah, lost the yard. Didn't have, did not even have a chance really to get try to get around the corner. Perez and Ryder Miller were there. And just like that, uh, LP's forced to a third and 11 now. It'll be about 10 minutes to go in the ball game when they uh, snap this football. Third quarter, Kiwani up 28-22 over Mendota. Hall again up 18 to 14 with uh, most of the fourth quarter left in that one. Cavaliers taking their time as one would expect and uh, now LP will call a timeout. As uh, Ellermeyer and uh, Coach Boudreaux kind of just waltzing on the field here. Eight, uh, 17 to seven LP with the lead. Ottawa with uh, momentum on their side right now. They're on the scoreboard and uh, forcing LP to a quick potential three and out. Yeah. Um, key play was just stealing, the, stripping that ball yeah. by uh, Quatrano and, uh, I mean, by Aguirre. And uh, I tell you what, uh, I, the momentum is switching here a little bit, but 10 points is a lot different than seven. You know, that's, that's, that, it, yeah. it, it, we've yeah. talked about it already, but that field goal may, may be the difference in this game. Let's see, Quincy and Jenna Seal over in the big six. I found a update on that one. Quincy 35 to 10 over Jenna Seal. Quincy 30, yeah, Jenna Seal seems to be, you know, Sterling just shut him out. Yeah. Jenna Seal might be down a little bit this year. So we don't see the, you know, we don't get to see him anymore because yeah. they're, they're not in our conference anymore. And, yeah, I think Sterling's really tough, but Geneseo might be down a little bit. Yeah, kind of like Newman uh, going through maybe a transition right. a little bit. Right. I know Newman, I think, well, their longtime coach retired a few years ago. Yeah, right, right. Third down and 11 for LP. And uh, Lynch going to go to the air. He's in trouble. Evades the first rusher. He throws it deep and almost intercepted Starkey. Kind of we went from being a receiver to a defender. Oh, we had three kids around yeah. Starkey. He uh, pulled back the Ottawa Pirate defender, and it was uh, Colby Mortensen who almost had the interception. So LP will have to punt it. Let's see if Ottawa brings a little heat or they set up a return. Yeah, Alexander's our return guy, and he is fast, yep. but he hasn't had much of a return on any, anything all year, really. Ten minutes to go in this one. 
Looked like LP was in control there for a while. Madrigal, nice punt. And Alexander backpedaling called for a fair catch. And it'll be just outside the Ottawa 30. That was a nice boot by Malik Madrigal. And of course he had the big fumble, but that, that's a way to get, uh, get some momentum back for LP. That was a nice punt. Good decision by Alexander to fair catch it because he was backpedaling and had no momentum going forward. So the Pirates need to drive 69 yards for a touchdown here. 10 minutes exactly to go in this ball game. That was a 48 yard punt. Wow. Yeah. Mark that one down as a big play in this game for right. Madrigal, kind of flipping the field a little bit at least if you're LP. Mortensen in the shotgun for Ottawa. Gonna pass, straight drop back, throwing deep. Looking for Sheehan, it's up for grabs. Lynch intercepted it. Mason Lynch got inside Sheehan. Yep. And the senior makes a big play for the Cavaliers. That's a big time play by yes, big time player Mason Lynch. Two studs right there, Sheehan and Lynch, and Lynch got the better of them that time. Got Lynch inside. Was, Lynch was step for step and, yep. and made a great interception. That was that might be the game right there, folks. I know there's 9.52 left, but Ottawa was going for the downs and uh, it <laughs> didn't work. So Lynch with a big interception, and now he'll take a breath and have to come back out and yeah. be a quarterback. He's returned kicks tonight. He's playing defense, as we've seen there. He's done everything. I don't think there's any doubt that uh, Mason Lynch has got to be our player of the game uh, if the LP Cavaliers yep. hold on to this one. Again, uh, LP's quarterback all year long has been Brendan Boudreaux, but he's in concussion protocol. So uh, Mason Lynch, who got a few snaps last week against Woodstock. And a big time run by Ellermeyer. First down. And that could be a backbreaker against Ottawa. First down run by Ellermeyer. Gonna, I think we're gonna hear a lot of Ellermeyer's name the rest of this game. Oh yeah. He moves it out to the 42. The clock will stop as the chains move momentarily. Ellemeyer, 13 carries for 55 yards. So we got uh, Lynch with 50, Ellemeyer with 55, and Madrigal with 58. Well, that's... And then you throw in Romanoli with 35. Yeah, yeah. You got four kids that have done a good job of running the ball. When I do that quick math, Dan, it's uh, got to be close to 200 yeah. yards. Yep. Total between those four. LP has not, they have not completed a pass, I don't believe. Oh, they had one. They had one, a short one. Yeah, yeah. the Starkey over the middle. Starkey, yep. LP going to call a timeout. Okay, not really what you want to do if you're LP. Ottawa says thank you. 9-10 to go. LP has a fresh set of downs. Right at 9 o'clock. You're listening to uh, LP Cavalier Football on 1039 FM, 1220 AM, WLPO, LaSalle, Peru, Oglesby. Jeremy Aiken and Dan Iltz with you. As it's been a pretty quick game here. We started just shy, uh, just a little after 7 o'clock. There was yeah. no scoring in the first quarter. LP got 10 in the second. LP with another touchdown in the third. And the Pirates got on the board here in the fourth. First play of the fourth quarter after Malik Madrigal fumble it gave Ottawa a short field position, and it was a nine-yard touchdown pass. Morton Shin to Sheehan. As uh, some other games getting close to uh, come to a conclusion. Got to believe Morris and Princeton are probably done with the running clocks in those games in favor of Morris and Princeton. Sycamore, I'm trying to see who Sycamore had. I think they might have had Marengo in a crossover game tonight. I think I may have a Sycamore score here. The Spartans, I don't know. Yeah, uh, Sycamore's playing Woodstock. No, there's a handoff, or Lynch keeps it. Mason Lynch may go. He's at the 30, the 25, one man to beat it, Sheehan. 10-5, dives for the end zone, he's in. Wow, Mason Lynch puts an exclamation mark on it. 58 yards. 58 yards to the house. Maybe, 58 maybe, yards. Wait yeah, a minute. Maybe, maybe they're calling it. 
It is a touchdown. He yep. dove for the pylon. And I think Mason heard us say, well, he's probably the player of the game, but let's yeah. make sure. Yeah. <laughs> 857 of this fourth quarter. Mason Lynch with a huge run. As I hear the uh, Cavalier student section say, this game's over to their uh, rivals across the field. Not quite. There's still nine minutes to go. Here's the extra point by Seth Adams. It is up and it is good. That electric touchdown run by Mason Lynch brought to you by Town of Country Services, doing whatever it takes 24-7. Plumbing, electric, heating, and cooling for over 100 years. Go to Town of Country Services. Dot com to find out more and that extra point brought to you by financial plus credit union they belong to you and that's the plus at financial plus credit union in peru ottawa mendota morris and diamond 58 yard touchdown run by lynch adams adds the pat and the cavaliers get that three possession lead back at 24 to 7. puts lynch over 100 yards 17 carries 106. so um no 108. My math is not as good as it's, my writing's not as good. It's 108. <laughs> 70 carries 108. So uh, this game is, you know, uh, Ottawa's, again, you know, even if they score right. twice, they still are, they still are have not tied it. So that if field goal looms bigger and bigger, and uh, I'm not so sure Ottawa can score twice. Uh, they're definitely going to go to the air now, oh, yeah. uh, probably exclusively. 24 to 7, LP over Ottawa, just under nine minutes to go in this ball game. Back deep for uh, Ottawa is Alexander, and uh, that kick is going to be just shy of the, the end two. zone. Taking at the 10, the 15, and he's at the 15, 20, and out of bounds at about the 22 yard line. That was Kevon Peterson. Peterson uh, forced out of bounds on the play by Lorton for LP. 8.49 to go. 24 to 7. Ottawa leads over LP. And uh, if you're LP's defense, I mean, they've been fantastic tonight. In fact, the only the score they gave up, it was uh, on a drive that Ottawa started inside the red zone. Right. So, uh, and I think, wasn't that a fourth down pass play, too? Yes, that, it was. So LP was close to keeping Ottawa off the board on that drive. Three receivers split out, two to the far side of Mortensen. And Mortensen going to throw, and it's to Sheehan. And guess who with the tackle, Mason Lynch. Yep, lost yardage on that. Back to the uh, 20, the 21-yard line. Yeah, probably a loss of one, maybe two. Yep, loss of one. Just a quick hit to Sheehan, but Mason Lynch has got the speed to match Sheehan and took him down in the open field. And the clock is running here. We're going to be about eight minutes to go in the ball game. And Sycamore indeed up 48 to eight over uh, Woodstock North. Yeah, that's not surprising. I believe what is it, Week Nine? Sycamore and Morris will basically oh, play for the conference title. Right. In Week Nine. Low snap to Mortensen, and he throws towards the sideline. Intercepted. At the 28 by Burrell, and he's going to get in. I'm going to say 28. the 28, Yep, man. 28. Caleb Burrell, his third interception of the season. This one's a pick six. So LP adds to the lead. Burrell, 28-yard interception return. 7.55 to go here in this fourth quarter. Burrell read the eyes of Mortensen and ran it to the house. That's another Town & Country Services touchdown for the Cavaliers. It's 30-7. to Here's Adams attempting the PAT. And high snap. Kick is up, and it is good. Uh, yep, for Adams. So Adams four for four PATs and he has a big field goal as well from 33 yards. And the Cavaliers blowing this one open now. It's 31 to seven. I don't think anybody thought this would be the score. No. I no, think LP not. would came in, you know, when you when you lose your, your quarterback and you got a you got a kid who hadn't quarterback before that right. becomes kind of an even game. But this is a really big surprise. And that's you know, now it's the, the thing you get what Ottawa's gotta worry about is they go to Morris next week. 
frankly, that's going to be a, a really tough matchup. Yeah. And, and so now you're four and four going into the final game. It's here. Uh, it helps. Uh, Woodstock's beaten us by close games uh, in the recent history, but uh, that's going to be such a big game. You know, it'll be so nice for Ottawa to get in the playoffs, but because right. mm-hmm. uh, it's been a while. But uh, it's it's far from automatic. Sure. <clears throat> and LP, uh, they're doing what they need to do tonight. Right, and we sure talked are. about LP uh, really needs this one because they have uh, two heavyweights left with Sycamore at Howard Fellows next week and then a week nine game at Caneland. Wow. Last yeah. year, LP was five and three and Caneland was four and four and LP went to Caneland and the Knights knew they had to win to get in. And uh, boy, they were emphatic in that victory. So. My guess is Caneland will be playoff eligible by then in oh, yeah. week five. Uh, I would think so. Three and three overall, though. I'm not, yeah. I have to see who Caneland plays tonight. <clears throat> They've got losses to Sycamore and Morris. Right. Caneland mm-hmm. does. Uh-oh, That's there's a, a big kick return. He's got one man to beat, Seth Adams, and he slows him down. Peterson. And it enables uh, Kennedy to knock Peterson out of bounds. Picked it up at the five. He wow. got it all the way back. It looks like about to the court, about the uh, 19, uh, 22. Uh, give Seth Adams credit, the kicker for LP. He did enough to uh, slow down the returner. And, yeah, gets it all the way down to the Cavalier 22-yard line on that big kick return. 73 yards. 7.43 to go in the ball game. One of the bigger plays of the – Season for Al- Ottawa as far as uh, uh, distance. Final score, uh, Princeton 56-7 to over St. Bede. Wow. Ottawa back at it here, first and 10 at the 22 of LP. Mortensen is going to pass. He's under pressure. Throws. Picked off by Lynch at the 15. Mason's at the 25 and gets it out past the 30. Mason Lynch. Wow. Doing it all tonight for LP. Second straight interception, or second interception for Lynch on the night. Yeah, he just threw that up in the air again. Is that the that'd be the third interception thrown by Mortensen now? No, that's in- Two to Lynch, and well, Burrell had the touchdown. Yeah, yeah that's Pick right. Pick six. Yep, Lynch, it is. Yep. Lynch stepped in front of Sheehan on yep. that one pass. The third, yep. Three oh. out of the last... He's for the three out of the last four passes, passes been yeah. intercepted. So that should definitely put an end to it. 31 to 7 now. Seven and a half minutes to go. LP with the ball at their own 33 yard line. And Lynch going to hand. Oh, they fumble it back, and Ottawa recovers. <laughs> it was a handoff to Madrigal, and uh, recovering it. For Ottawa Cody was Sproles. Cody Sproles. Wow. So that's, by my count, Dan, eight total yep. turnovers I in this game. I think you're right. Wow. Four on each team. Yep. Roman only fumble. Lynch threw an interception. Madrigals had two fumbles. Yep. That one on the exchange with Lynch. Alexander fumbled for Ottawa, and Mortensen's thrown three interceptions. Yep, that's exactly right. Wow. it's a lot of turnovers. <laughs> Ottawa spread things out. Ottawa they only the had ball. seven in the whole season. <laughs> First and ten at the th- – oh, boy, they hand it off to Alexander, and he is hit immediately. Making a tackle for LP was Creed McCormick. First time calling Creed's name tonight. He's pr- primarily a, an offensive lineman, a stalwart offensive lineman for LP, but he's getting some time on defense now. Lost three. Is uh, Warren Rowicki getting some a breather? He's been a nice player up the middle for LP. Ottawa has had no running room up the middle. No, they have. The strength of LP's defense up the middle. First uh, and uh, about 13 now. Loss of three. Yep, loss of three. Spotted at the LP 36. They're going to run it. Alexander running to the outside, and he's ran down. From behind, a very nice play. Looked like uh, Nolan Glenn, number 53 for LP, ran the speedy Alexander down from behind, which is not easy to do. And another loss. Another three. Back to the 39. 
Well, with three straight interceptions, Otto a little gun shy about exactly. going to the air. And we're about halfway through this fourth quarter. Mortensen uh, and the Pirates looking at a third and very long third and 16. I'd third say. and 16. Yeah, the first down marker at the uh, LP 23. He's going to have to throw this time. Four receivers for Mortensen. They empty out the backfield. Low snap. Mortensen's got it. Throwing towards the sub, which is air mailed it. Uh, nobody in the area. Looked like Pierce was the closest uh, pirate receiver, or Price, excuse me, and Gunnar Skoog was uh, in the area for LP on defense. So he's 6 for 21 for 43 yards. Mortensen with three interceptions. Wow. Yeah. That's. Uh, so we'll see if he has one more it. in him here. Fourth and 16. And if you're Cavaliers, the old saying, uh, pin your ears back and come at him here. Yep. Although they have three guys deep in the secondary. So there's plenty of room over the middle, but uh, LP trying to keep everybody in front of him. Over the middle, intercepted by Lynch again. Mason Lynch over the middle with his third interception. Mortensen wow. to Lynch. Ninth total interception in this game. Yeah, one. Six, yeah, nine. Four out of his last five, four out of his last six have been interception. Important since passes. Four turnovers on LP, five on Ottawa. Three interceptions for Mason Lynch. He's got a 58-yard touchdown run as well. And uh, 541 to go in this game. You tell you, Kyle Wendy had three interceptions in the 1992 game against LP for Ottawa. I can tell you that, but I don't know. <laughs> you know, I have to look. I just say record what it is. And the LP now just got to hold on to the football here. Is there, uh, let's see, was it? Ellermeyer. Ellermeyer. Uh, that, was, that was Madrigal. Yeah. They uh, got Malik back in there even after his second fumble of the night. Going to try to keep the confidence up. Game one. Clock is rolling here. Second down and nine. They gave Madrigal one yard on the carry. And they go right back up the middle. Not much on the carry. Finley and uh, Medro on the on the stop. Maybe a couple. So third down here. Had to go again. And he's got a first down. Finley on the tackle. Yeah, first down, that is uh, their 18th first down. So they'll move the chains, and uh, I think he was able to stay in bounds. 14-yard gain there. He's up to 75 yards on 13 carries. Medical is. And this game's virtually over, folks. It's four minutes to play, 31-7 LP. Clock is running down under four minutes now. And a toss to Romanoli. He doesn't get much there. About the 30. Lost a couple. It'll be second down and about 12 for the Cavaliers. Again, LP uh, back home next week against Sycamore. Ottawa on the road at Morris. 
So both rivals will play powerhouses next week. Two teams that are in the uh, 5A rankings. Morris was number one before their loss last week to Richmond Burton. And there's Madrigal off left tackle. And Malik gets it out to about the 38, maybe the 37 yard line. Third and four coming up for LP. Be about two and a half minutes to go. Matter goes up to 82 yards on 14 carries. Yeah, some fans head for the exits. Oh yeah. Head for the parking lots. On this chilly night. And they're going to hand it off to Madrigal and Malik with a first down carry. Got the pitch from Lynch and gets it out to the 45, another seven yards or so. so maybe LP knows and trying to get Madrigal to the century mark. Getting close to where they can take just the, the knee. He's up to 90. Yeah, he's going to check out. 15. So Malik's night's probably done for uh, LP. Gives a wave to somebody on the Ottawa side. <laughs> Friendly wave. 45 yard line for LP. And Lynch taking all the time he can here. And they're gonna pitch it to uh, a new ball carrier there, Imani, who's been at, whoa! Imani running hard. And he gets it down to the Ottawa 30. Uh, Brett Imani, who's been a defensive stalwart for LP all season, gets a rare carry, and uh, he almost went all the way. Number 23, right? Yeah, Imani for LP got it down to the 29 of Ottawa. A pirate defender had a hold of his jersey, or he probably would have went all the way there. And the clock is down to a minute 15 now. And uh, maybe one more play, maybe you have to do two more plays. Hand off, let's see who that was. 30. Looks like number seven for okay. LP, uh, Ethan Pohar. Giving some other kids carries for the first time this year. That's up to the 26 yard line. This could be the last play of the game. Yep, I think the victory formation for the Cavaliers. I think you're right. Looks like our final score is gonna be 31 to seven. That's it, so the Cavaliers get their fifth win of the year. They move to five and two and three and one in conference play over the Ottawa Pirates. 31 to seven, we'll be back with some post game numbers. After this, the Cavalier win over Ottawa, 31-7 on 103.9 WLPO. For plumbing, heating, cooling, generators, and appliances, think Grazier's Plumbing and Heating in McNabb. Whether you run cold or hot, Grazier's will make sure your home is always just the right temperature. And for those cold winter nights, or when the power's out. And Grazier's does boilers too. Gotta call Grazier's 8221 Gergovich Family Chiropractic in LaSalle is a proud supporter of high school sports. Dr. Gergovich utilizes the most advanced technology to provide effective care for men, women, and children of all ages. Whether you're getting down in a three-point stance, getting down off a ladder, or getting down on a dance floor, you need a chiropractor on your health care team. Search Gergovich Family Chiropractic today to see all the ways having Dr. Gergovich on your team can help you be happier, healthier, and pain-free. <laughs> 